Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, here's a quote. I don't know how you can impeach somebody who's done a great job. Donald Trump has insisted, telling Fox News that if he was impeached, the markets would crash and, quote, everybody would be very poor. And in another tirade against his former lawyer, Michael Cohen, who claimed the president directed him to make hush money payments to two alleged mistresses, Mr. Trump suggested that plea bargains should be illegal because people just make up lies. Live now to our Washington correspondent, Kylie. Morris, Kylie, over to you. Matt, this is a very uh, Trumpian response, I think. If you look into the detail of this interview, we know he doesn't apologise for things when he's caught or a little bit stuck. He simply goes bigger, and that's what he's done, the impeachment comment, the suggestion that America would be worse off, he wouldn't be worse off, but they would miss out on his talents. Uh, the flipping, as you say, the plea deal, the idea that flipping should perhaps be illegal, so perhaps speaking to the authorities, telling them what you know is a bad thing. Uh, I've got to say, it's all very Trumpian, but what is clear is that he is in trouble. He doesn't do these kinds of interviews unless it, there is some kind of a crisis going on. But we are in a crisis of that magnitude, I think. The Comey sacking, uh, the Access Hollywood tapes. Uh, let's begin uh, by going back to that interview uh, with Donald Trump on Fox this morning. I don't know how you can impeach somebody who's done a great job. I'll tell you what, if I ever got impeached, I think the market would crash. I think everybody would be very poor. Because without this thinking, uh, you, would see, you would see numbers that you wouldn't believe in reverse. The fact that the president of the United States sits in the portico talking impeachment is a sign of how powerful a shock his presidency just suffered. With the conviction of two of his former associates, Paul Manafort, his former campaign chief, and lawyer Michael Cohen, whose courtroom confessions implicate President Trump in a federal crime, some might have expected a defensive Donald Trump. But the bravado never stops. Why, he might even pardon Paul Manafort just to show what a circus justice can be. Are you considering pardoning Paul Manafort? I have great respect for what he's done in terms of what he's gone through. And I would say some of the charges mm -hmm. they threw against him, every consultant, every lobbyist in Washington probably does. He used the interview to press home his message that the Mueller investigation has veered wildly off course in its reckless pursuit of him. And what's come out of... Manafort, no collusion. What's come out of Michael Cohn? No collusion. They raid his office at 6 o'clock in the morning. And how about with Manafort? They raid his home at like 5 in the morning, I think on a weekend, and his wife is in bed and they go in with guns? Yeah. This is an Al Capone. So, despite what Washington commuters were reading this morning, according to the president, the FBI and Department of Justice are out of control and he's innocent of anything. Search any red line carriage on the DC metro system and you'll likely find a constitutional lawyer ready to deliver an opinion and declare the level of legal peril the president now faces. But what happens to Donald Trump next isn't down to the lawyers. When it comes to deciding the fate of President Trump, there are two groups who really matter. One is the congressmen and women on Capitol Hill who have to decide whether they have the political will to act. And the other is, of course, the great American voter. We dug out some archive from 1973 yes, that showed how folks were feeling about maybe impeaching Richard Nixon. You think the president should be impeached? He isn't above the law. No one should be. I think it's a fantastic idea. I don't trust the man. The man doesn't keep his word. He is very involved with himself. I think it's amazing that the country is not already fighting in the streets. He's divided the country that much. So fast forward 45 years and tourists from all across America are about to begin a sightseeing trip of the capital. Do you think the president should be impeached? No, I don't feel there's enough evidence to warrant that. He obviously has done some things he should not have done and he should be held accountable. He's not above the law. I don't think it would be good for the country if that's what happens, but I think we should, we should follow what our elected representatives uh, want to do. And if that's the way the vote goes, then so be it. So what are those elected representatives thinking? 
Let's start with Republican Senator John Kennedy on Michael Cohen's credibility. If the prosecutors told Mr. Cohen to stand on one leg and bark like, bark like a dog in the middle of Pennsylvania Avenue, I mean, you know, he would probably do it. That's the way it works when you, when you plead out and you're trying to reduce your sentence. For us to pass it off as Republicans is, you know, no big deal. Um, that's it's just not right. This is a big deal, and uh, we ought to treat it seriously. My Republican colleagues need to end their moral stupor. Otherwise, they're going to be complicit in a constitutional maelstrom. Thank you, everybody, very much. Despite the press pool's most vocal attempts, Stoney faced silence all round the president's round table today, but they can't hold their breath forever. As the editors of Time illustrated, the president is in deep and the tide is rising. So the man who was Donald Trump's trusted confidant for over a decade now faces up to five years in jail. For Michael Cohen, trashed in public by his former boss, it's a bitter end to a once beautiful friendship. The son of immigrants, Mr. Cohen's path to the office of the most powerful man in the country was anything but conventional, including running a cab firm and a stake in a Brooklyn nightclub. Our foreign affairs correspondent, Jonathan Ruckman, reports from New York. He was elected, in his words, to drain the Washington swamp. But Donald Trump now stands accused of filling the capital with bucket loads of scandal imported from here, his native New York. His go-to clean-up guy for a decade, his Mr. Fix-It, was Michael Cohen, a brash New Yorker to his fingertips, just like his boss. Or so it seemed until Tuesday when a strikingly contrite Cohen pleaded guilty to federal crimes in New York. What he did was he worked to pay money to silence two women who had information that he believed would be detrimental to the 2016 campaign and to the candidate and the campaign. That was not all Cohen admitted to. The president's former lawyer owned and traded in licenses for taxi cabs. But this self-confessed crook concealed the income from the taxman. In a city gripped by tales of organized crime, Cohen milked the iconic yellow taxis for all they were worth. Michael Cohen stands accused of evading $1.3 million worth of taxes on his taxi business over a four-year period. But it's not this which spells trouble for Donald Trump. It's Mr. Cohen's confession that he broke campaign finance laws by making payments to two women, and the possibility that he spills the beans on any alleged collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians. The relationship was so close that Ben Stiller joined Alec Baldwin in this parody. <laughs> Yellow yeah, was Donald Trump, who this? It's Michael Cohen. God, I miss you so much. Oh, hey, what's up, amigo? How are you holding up in prison? I'm not in prison. Oh, well, give it a couple of weeks. <laughs> but yesterday, the president called Cohen more or less part-time, as if the height of Trump Tower itself wasn't distance enough. The former vice president of the Trump organization was, he suggested, dishonestly plea bargaining to avoid jail. Why is he doing this? Because, Why? He's he's, your attorney. because he made a great deal. Because he was in another business, totally unrelated to me, where I guess there was fraud involved and loans and taxi cabs and all sorts of things. Nothing to do with me because he had an outside business. He worked for me. Mm -hmm. You could really say it was more or less part time. He had other businesses, he had other clients. I'm not his only client. This morning, the president's former campaign advisor, who has himself given evidence to the Russia investigation, turned against Cohen as well. He told me his friend was an unreliable witness in a dispute which has its origins in a simple case of sour grapes. Michael looked at himself as one of Donald Trump's uh, closest political advisors and he simply um, was not even given a White House position. As I have said, Michael should have been given a position perhaps in the, in the he didn't have to be in the West Wing, Jonathan, but he could have been in the, in the EOB, the Eisenhower office building adjacent, and all of this would have been solved. So I understand how he feels. But with that said, we were trying to find the proper role for Michael because Michael doesn't understand political strategy. And I can assure you the, the irony of this, Jonathan, is that had these women come out, claim that they had had affairs with Donald Trump, 
I don't think it would have affected one vote. Donald Trump still would have won the election. Do you think the president is more likely to be impeached because of what's happened? I don't in the think last the president is more likely to be impeached because it hasn't changed the hearts and minds of of the Americans in the political. I don't think that this this was set into the cake. Everyone, majority of people expected Paul Manafort to be found guilty, and the majority of people aren't going to suddenly accept that Michael Cohn is a star witness when. They, this man has pled guilty to six financial issues that have nothing to do with Donald Trump. And so you're saying your old friend is 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 an unreliable witness. He's an unreliable wit. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, well, yes, he's unreliable in, for the impeachment of Donald Trump. So are you saying that Michael Cohen is a bigger sleazeball than Donald Trump is alleged to be? I don't think I look. I'm not. I'm not going to accept the premise that Donald Trump's a sleazeball. You said that. I think that Michael. Um, I, I would tell you, Michael's acting sleazy with, uh, with, with to the president now. Are you worried that Michael Cohen will talk to the special prosecutor about any alleged Russia collusion because his lawyer has suggested that he's happy to, to talk? If Michael, if Michael Cohen talk, the short answer is no, I'm not. I was in the grand jury. They asked me a lot of questions about Michael Cohen. They did not bring Michael Cohen to the special counsel. Anything Michael Cohn says will conflict with what other people are saying, and therefore it will be a he said, he said, who are you going to believe? And I don't think Michael has credibility. So there you have the essence of the president's defense. If Michael Cohen, an ex-employee, has admitted to five counts of tax evasion, including his taxi business, why should he be trusted in anything else, he says. Jonathan Rugman, Channel 4 News, New York. Well, earlier I spoke to Sidney Powell in Dallas. She's a former federal prosecutor and a Trump supporter. I started by asking if she thought that Donald Trump was worried about getting impeached. Uh, no, I really don't think he is. The president knows that he enjoys widespread support among the people of this country. We know how much he loves America and how much he is trying to do for the average American that I call the engine of our country that makes everything work. But of course, all this could change with the midterm elections, couldn't it? It could, yes. These are going to be the most important midterm elections we've ever had. And do you think that in, a, in an ironic sort of consequence of what happened yesterday, President Trump's base of supporters has actually been energized because this vote now in November will be all about him? It, it really will be. And yes, I do think the base is going to be is going to be energized because of it. I think they already have been. I mean, what we've witnessed in terms of the intelligence community and the upper echelon of our FBI and Department of Justice literally making up a narrative to try to keep him from being president and mm. then to try to bring about his impeachment or destabilize his presidency has just been extraordinary and people are furious about it. And yet there was an awful lot of outrage uh, when Bill Clinton uh, was president and he had his issues with Monica Lewinsky that led to impeachment. And here we have a president in Donald Trump who yesterday admitted on Fox News that he had paid hush money out of his own personal pocket to two former mistresses, one of whom was a former porn star, during an election campaign. Is that okay? With you personally? Well, I don't know the details of his personal relationships with those people. I know that billionaires are often sued or they're easy targets for people who make claims to try to get money. And as I understand it, his attorney at the time settled those claims out of court. And that's perfectly lawful. There was nothing I'm illegal not about, about lawful. it whatsoever. So, sorry to interrupt. But is this what it's come down to, that it's now strictly a question of legality, but morality in high office is basically, you know, is no longer a big issue? Well, these events happened a long time ago. It's not about the way he's conducting himself in office now. The president, I think, has demonstrated exemplary conduct while he's been in office. People grow and people change, and I think the position that he has been elected to and the faith the people have placed in him has simply strengthened him in every way. Sidney Powell, thank you very much indeed. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure, and tell all my friends in England hello. Now, 
If President Trump is in any way worried about being linked by his former lawyer to illegal campaign spending, he certainly wasn't showing it during an interview broadcast on American television today. The usual self-confidence was on display as he shrugged off any suggestion of impeachment. If that ever happened, he said, the stock market would crash and everybody would be very poor. Thank you, everybody, very much. Thank you. Today, a tsunami of questions went unanswered. White House staff bundling out reporters. But the president's shifting explanations for secret payments are under ever greater scrutiny. President Trump now says he did know about those payments made And for the first time, Trump is ridiculing the idea of impeachment on novel grounds by referencing the stock market. I don't know how you can impeach somebody who's done a great job. I'll tell you what, if I ever got impeached, I think the market would crash. I think everybody would be very poor because without this thinking, uh, you, would see, you would see numbers that you wouldn't believe. And his main tactic is to distance himself from both his former lawyer, Michael Cohen, who has implicated Trump, and from his one-time campaign chairman, Paul Manafort, who has been found guilty of fraud. I didn't know Manafort well. He wasn't with the campaign long. They got him on things totally unrelated to the campaign. And by the way, they got Cohen on totally unrelated to the campaign. I'm not involved. I wasn't charged with anything. And there was this extraordinary comment, the president criticizing Cohen for actually cooperating with the FBI, flipping, as Trump called it. In all fairness to him, most people are going to do that. And I've seen it many times. I've had many friends involved in this stuff. It's called flipping, and it almost ought to be illegal. And then he launched a scathing attack on Jeff Sessions, his own attorney general, for tolerating the Mueller investigation into Russian collusion. It raises the specter that Sessions or Mueller, or maybe both of them, could be fired. That would ignite a political firestorm. And I put an attorney general that never took control of the Justice Department, Jeff Sessions, never took control of the Justice Department, and uh, it's a sort of an incredible thing. He took the job, and then he said, I'm going to recuse myself. I said, what kind of a man is this? Sessions tonight has fired back, risking the president's fury by saying the Department of Justice will not, in his words, be improperly influenced by political considerations. Tonight, it is unclear whether Sessions will survive for long. Another possible move is a presidential pardon for Paul Manafort. But any such decision would surely only amplify the quiet voices already saying that impeachment proceedings should be on the agenda. Robert Moore, News at 10, Washington.